Hey all, I'm Gary Kearns with NIOPT and I want to go over a few dry needling techniques for you that are common out there. Talk just a little bit about some of the scenarios that they're most appropriate. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We'll zero in a little bit. One of the more common techniques that you're going to see is what's called Hong's fast in, fast out approach. It's more commonly referred to as pistoning. So as the name implies, it is, and got a little twitch there, it is fast in and out. You're advancing the needle and taking it out quickly. Now, this is great for muscles that have very little resistance to the needle being advanced in or out, and it's great for eliciting the twitch response. One of the disadvantages, actually two disadvantages, one of the big disadvantages is this is a little bit more aggressive, and it also tends to make your patients more sore afterward, especially if you elicit more twitch responses. The other thing, too, is as you go in and out, you're going so quickly that you really have a hard time detecting any change in tissue texture or patient response, other than them verbally telling you that they have symptoms. And so one thing that we'll talk about a little bit more at the on-site course is we can slow down the speed of our pistoning in and out. So it's no longer the fast in and out, it's a little bit slower in and out. You can also change the angle here, but one of the advantages of going a little bit slower is you can detect when you're going from one layer of muscle to the other, you can detect when you're going through fascial layers, and you can get a better end feel for the resistance of the tissue and the reactivity of the tissue. That tends to really help cut down on some of the post-treatment soreness. One of the other techniques that you're gonna see is, well, right there, you kind of leave it in C2, and, and leaving it and letting the needle just kind of rest in the muscle for 15, 20, 30 seconds is sometimes gonna be necessary for that muscle that just grabs onto it and will not let go. Um, if you try to do the fast in, fast out approach of pistoning in a muscle that just latches on, it is going to be very uncomfortable for the patient. So when the muscle is very reactive and won't let go, you've got a couple of options. One of them is just to sit there and let it relax. And you can actually see the needle just dancing a little bit. We think that might be a little bit of the external evidence of some of the increased EMG activity that you're seeing. But sometimes as you see dancing of the needle slow down, you can go back recheck the resistance and all of a sudden you're able to advance the needle in and out a little bit better. One of the other options that you can do when the muscle latches onto it is leave the needle as is, but twist. Right? So we're not advancing it in, we're not taking it out, but you can twist and we're looking for increase in resistance. And we think that with the, the resistance that we get with the twisting, we think this works best with muscles that either latch on very, very tightly, or as you course through different layers of muscle, we know that there's gonna be fascial layers. We think that that's gonna be some mechanical coupling of not only the muscle fibers, but also some of the fascial uh, layers that you're going through as well. Oftentimes that resistance goes along with uh, increase in reproduction of, of symptoms. And then sometimes we can actually combine the two where we can do a simultaneous pistoning and twist at the same time, and if you want to call it so, we can call it twistening. You can see we go in and out as we twist. Good. But all these are just variations and really there's no right or wrong technique. There's the right technique for the right patient. There's the right technique for the right muscle reaction. So if you'd like to learn more information about the different techniques and some of the cases that they'd be most applicable, applicable to, please come check out one of our dry needling courses. If you want more information about not only the dry needling courses, but other NIOP courses, please go check out NIOP.com.